Okay, today what I want to do is demonstrate how to simplify a generic cubic polynomial equation in much the same way we did with completing, a quadra completing the square with a quadratic. So a generic cubic polynomial equation, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, the idea would be for us to eliminate this term. And the technique that we'll use to do that is very similar to what we did with the quadratic. We took x and replaced it with another variable, x equals y plus k, where k is a constant. And part of what exercise 5.1 at the bottom of page 49 is about is trying to determine what the constant should be. That's not too hard if that's all we're focused on right now. Uh, we want to see about eliminating a, getting rid of that quadratic term. So when we do this replacement, the question really is, where do quadratic terms come from? Well, one of them will come from taking the cubic term and putting in y plus k and cubing it and recalling the binomial theorem. That should give us y cubed plus 3 times k times y squared plus 3k squared times y plus k to the third. There's exactly one third degree term there with a coefficient of 3k. The other third degree term, or second degree term, I'm sorry, was um, coming from the quadratic piece. If we take a times y plus k and square it, that's a times y squared plus 2k plus k squared, and that's a y squared plus, there should be a y right there, a bunch of stuff we don't really care about. So when we add these two things together, the y plus k cubed plus a times the quantity y plus k squared, what we want is for the x, the y squared coefficient to vanish. So in other words, what we need is for 3k plus a to equal 0. And so what that forces is a is equal to um, minus 3k but we're trying to find k, so that's going to be minus a over 3. So I want to apply this to a particular cubic as a demonstration. Let's then create a particular cubic polynomial equation. And the one I would like to look at right now um, starts out as x to the third minus 9x squared plus 21x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so you look at that. If you're really clever, you might be able to guess a root of that. We're not going to mess uh, with that. We're going to change it to a simpler equation. Now, our value of k has to be the quadratic coefficient, which is minus 9 over 3. I'm sorry, that's minus the quadratic coefficient. So that's negative of negative 9 over 3, which is positive 3. So Everywhere we see an x, we'll go through and we'll replace x with y plus 3. So this becomes y plus 3 cubed minus 9 times y plus 3 squared plus 21 times y plus 3 minus 5 equals 0. Taking that equation and expanding the first term, we get y cubed plus 3 times 3y squared plus 3 times 9y plus 27. That's the y plus 3 quantity cubed. And then we get minus 9 times y squared plus 6y plus 9. And then we get a plus 21y plus 63 minus 5 equals 0. So, for the moment, let's keep this all on one page. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make it smaller. And then apparently that 0 um, doesn't want to come along. So we're going to move it over here where it belongs. I think we lost a parentheses, too. And so we'll grab that and put it where it belongs. Uh, you got to love the magic whiteboard. And so now what I want to do is combine like terms. So 
this thing becomes y to the third. And then for y squared, we get this term and that term. So that's plus 9 minus 9 times y squared. Our y terms include this one, which is 27 times y. We have a negative 9 times 6, which is minus 54 times y. And then we have a plus 21 times y. And then our constant term, we have 27. And we have minus 9 times 9, which is 81. Then we have plus 63 minus 5, that all equal to 0. And so the final equation comes out to be, excuse me, that would not be y squared because we're eliminating the y squared term. This is y to the third power plus 0y squared plus 27 and 21 is 48 minus 54 is negative 6 times y. And here we have 27 and 63 is 90, minus 81 leaves positive 9, minus 5 is plus 4 equals 0. Or in other words, and again changing back the variable to x, this becomes x cubed minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. So we've transformed our polynomial. Now, in order to see what that's really doing, I want to come over here and look at the graphing calculator and see what a picture of this looks like. I've taken the liberty of putting in to the y equals menu the original polynomial. And so when we graph that, we see what it looks like. We see that it has, in fact, got three roots. Uh, one of them looks like it's a little bit bigger than zero. If um, on the standard scale here, each tick mark on the x-axis represents one unit, so that looks like uh, somewhere between 3 and 4. That looks like it's at about 5. If we go through and put in the depressed cubic, which is x to the power 3, and then we had no um, x squared term, and then we had a minus 6 times x, and then a plus 4, and we look at the graph of that, well, one way to look at that might be to um, darken it in. So if I scroll down, make it stand out a little bit more visually just by this mechanism. Here's the original polynomial. And if you keep track of where various points have gone, this x-intercept around 5 seems to have gone to 4, 3, 2. It seems to have shifted about 3 units to the left. Well, that's because when you take a polynomial and you replace the variable with the variable plus 3, that's a horizontal shift of negative 3 units. That should be familiar from high school algebra. So we've seen how to depress a cubic polynomial. This can be done with any cubic polynomial. And so we've reduced the problem of solving cubic polynomial equations to things of the form x cubed minus 3px plus q equals 0. And the reason for the minus 3 will become apparent in the next video. So I think we'll wrap that up for now and pick it up with something called Cardano's method.